Come, bless day, spring, come and cheer our spirits by your advent here. Disperse the gloomy clouds of night, and death's dark shadows to flight Rejoice Rejoice Emmanuel Shall come to you O Israel Hello, and welcome to Zion Lutheran Church for our online video worship for this, the third Sunday of Advent. Thank you for joining us. A few announcements before we get underway today. Uh, first of all, uh, a few things to celebrate. This year, I'm happy to report that our Stitch and Sew group, which are the women of the church who make quilts, completed 73 quilts this year, which is a great total. Uh, also, our Ruth Circle, which is our women's group, they put together 62 personal care kits for Lutheran World Relief. Uh, so we celebrate both of those things and give thanks to God for those. Also, just a reminder that our drive through communion continues, rain, snow, or shine, uh, as we go through the year here. Uh, that is Wednesday nights from 6 to 7, and Sundays from 1 to 2 in the afternoon. Also, the 2021 uh, envelopes are available here at the church. Uh, if you are at home and you would like to have those envelopes, if you would prefer to have a curbside pickup, uh, call the church and we'll be able to uh, address that or be able to work that out with you. Uh, hopefully, if you drive up, we'll be able to deliver those to your car, or you can come in and grab those from the church. Um, let us know if you have a preference. And then also, um, a reminder that Christmas Eve this year will be virtual for everyone. Uh, so we will produce a Christmas Eve service. You can find that on our Facebook and YouTube channels, but also if you are in the Altoona and Haldesburg area on the public broadcast channel, which is channel 14. That will be at 7 o'clock, 9 o'clock on Christmas Eve, and then also at 8, 10, and noon on Christmas morning. And then finally, we are doing a virtual Christmas card project. Uh, the, uh, the instructions, if you receive an invite through email, uh, will be in the email, uh, but it's pretty simple. You take your phone with your family, Give a, a greeting, as you would, uh, to the people that are at home. Uh, this is for anybody to see. Say who you are. Say Merry Christmas or whatever message you would like to give. Make sure your phone is in landscape mode, not portrait, but landscape. Uh, and then, once you've done that, you will send it as an email attachment to zionchurchholidaysburg at gmail.com. Once again, that's zionchurchholidaysburg at gmail.com, and we ask that you would send that in by December the 19th. Once you've done that, all of the, our, those videos and greetings will be stitched together into one video, and we'll send it out as a virtual Christmas card so that you can see people that you haven't seen in quite some time. Uh, so once again, that's December the 19th, the due, the due date for those videos, and you send those to zionchurchholidaysburg at gmail.com. Those are all the announcements I have for you today, so uh, let us now begin our worship. We gather in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the aid of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that, attentive to your word, we may confess our sins, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now, together, let us confess our sin in the presence of God and each other. 
Gracious God, have mercy on us. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. Uphold us by your Spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. Almighty God, you once called John the Baptist to give witness to the coming of your Son and to prepare his way. Grant us, your people, the wisdom to see your purpose today and the openness to hear your will, that we may witness to Christ's coming and so prepare his way. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, What then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, No. Then they said to him, Who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness, make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they had been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? And John answered them, I baptize with water, 
Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany across the Jordan where John was baptizing. This is the gospel of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable to you, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. On September 9th, 1965, Commander Jim Stockdale was shot down while flying a mission over North Vietnam. His ejector seat landed him in a small village where he was immediately captured beaten, and made a prisoner of war. He would spend the next seven and a half years as a POW at the infamous Hanoi Hilton. And as the highest ranking officer in the military at that prison, he helped to organize the men inside and was later credited with saving hundreds of lives through his leadership. So how did he do it? How did he save all of those lives? And also, how did he survive for seven and a half years through some of the most inhumane conditions imaginable? Well, he developed a way of thinking that is now known as the Stockdale Paradox, and I find it rather prophetic in nature. The Stockdale Paradox acknowledges two things. First, ruthless honesty about your situation. And second, unwavering hope about your outcome. Ruthless honesty. We are prisoners of war. We are tortured. We are hungry. We are sick and suffering. Life is very, very bad right now. But also unwavering hope. We have faith that our side will ultimately be victorious and we will be set free and this nightmare that we are living in will be over. We will prevail against these horrific conditions. So in a nutshell, that's the mindset that he helped instill. Now this week, we in our gospel lessons are returning to the man we know as John the Baptist, who may have used something very similar to that mindset thousands of years earlier. Now, last week we looked at him from Mark's perspective, and this week we are going to view him from the lens of John the Evangelist. And there's one line early on that I find fascinating, one that is unique to John's gospel. In verse 7, it says, He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. That verse points us to another line from John, just a little bit earlier, that the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. As a witness who testifies to the light, John must know both sides of the story. John knows the light and the darkness. And the darkness to borrow a phrase from Jim Stockdale, requires us to be ruthlessly honest in order to name it for what it is. There's a lot of darkness in John's world, as John the Baptist knows it. Or to switch metaphors, there's quite a few obstacles that are in the way, many mountains and valleys, twists and turns, all these bumps that are in the Lord's road. Therefore, Make straight the way of the Lord. We heard that last week and we'll hear it again, both in Mark and in John. So there are obstacles of politics. The Romans, they're there and they are harshly ruling over the people. There are obstacles of economics. The system is weighted against the people and it's designed to help only the empire and the wealthy. There are obstacles of religion. The temple leadership is corrupt It is misguided. It is fearful. There are obstacles of basic survival, issues of food, disease, and other resources. There are obstacles of sin, as people get in their own way, as people have turned away from God. 
a multitude of obstacles, deep is the darkness. But John is unwavering in naming these problems that he's facing in his days. But he's even willing to to take on the powers that be. And this move will ultimately land him in prison where he will lose his head. And that sometimes is the price you pay for ruthless honesty. But there is that counterbalance, unwavering hope. John testifies to the light that will never be overcome. He testifies about the Messiah being sent by God who will lead us into a new way of life. He has faith that God is providing what the world needs, the one who's coming after him, Jesus Christ. Jesus is the source of his unwavering hope. Jesus is the one who will overcome every honestly named problem that John can list. And I wonder, if we could be so bold as to be ruthlessly honest about ourselves and our situation over these past many months, about the perils that we are currently facing, can we honestly recognize the truth of all the darkness that we're peering into? Right now, we are seeing excess fatalities from covid but also from other maladies. Uh, In the United States, the death rates are up. We are also in the midst of a mental health crisis as people struggle to cope with all of the stresses that that are squeezing us right now. Secondary health problems are also becoming more problematic as routine health care and elective surgeries are postponed. Unemployment claims continue to yo-yo as our economy teeters on the edge of chaos. We are witnessing social unrest as disenfranchised groups call for justice, and we fear for our overtaxed and overworked healthcare and education systems, both of them in dire straits, struggling to do their job in the best and most efficient way possible. And so we feel the weight of our collective social health from all of these different problems, especially as we head into this holiday season. And so what did I miss? What would you add to that list of truth? Was I being brutally honest enough? Later in life, Jim Stockdale, now an admiral in the U.S. Navy, gave an interview about his seven and a half years in, uh, in the war as a prisoner of war. And even though we've only been at this COVID thing for under a year, even though we have far more liberties than he or any of those other POWs had, I found his quote to be enlightening and also to be just we can apply it to our situation. When asked which prisoners didn't make it out of Vietnam, Stockdale replied, oh, that's easy, the optimists. Oh, they were the ones who said, we're going to be out by Christmas, and Christmas would come, and Christmas would go. Then they'd say, we're going to be out by Easter, and Easter would come, and Easter would go. And then Thanksgiving, and then it would be Christmas again, and they died of a broken heart. This is a very important lesson. You must never confuse faith that you will prevail in the end, which you can never afford to lose, with the discipline to confront the most brutal facts of your current reality, whatever they might be. What are you pinning your hopes on right now? The vaccines? The holidays? Better therapeutics? Better testing? Herd immunity? A cure? A miracle? Somehow, some way that we will just go back to normal? What light are you seeking? What light are you, you testifying to? Where is your unwavering hope placed right now? 
I pray that your unwavering hope is found in the same place in December of 2020 as it was in January of this year. I pray that your unwavering hope matches with John the Baptist. I, I pray that Jesus continues to be the source and the subject of your hope. We continue to testify to the light, not with blind optimism or with illusory hope, but with the light of truth that stands the test of time and the test of circumstance. As we wander through the darkness of, of this just awful year, may we place our ultimate hope in the one who is to come again. May the steadfast proximity and promises of God be our source of strength as we take on these ruthless truths. Have unwavering hope that with God's help, inspiration, and direction, we will prevail. We will overcome all of the conditions that are causing us heartache. Because yes, things are as bad as they seem. But no, this, this will not be the final chapter. The light of Jesus Christ will remain with us. It is what gives us courage and conviction to worship and to serve God. Jesus will ultimately complete the work that he began. And so, to, as we live in this in-between place of the paradox, in between the ruthless truth and the unwavering hope, may the wisdom of the recovery community be our guide as we testify to the light. God, grant us the serenity to accept the things that we cannot change, courage to change the things we can, and the wisdom to know the difference. Amen.
Let us confess our faith together with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. God of power and might, shine your radiance and come quickly to this weary world and hear our prayers for everyone in need. God of preachers and messengers, you have entrusted your church with the work of proclaiming the good news. Strengthen the witness of bishops, pastors, deacons, church musicians, lay leaders, and all people who contribute their prayers and talents to public worship. Embed your word in their hearts. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of every living creature, you announce the year of your favor for all of creation. Extend your kindness and relief to endangered animals and plants. Strengthen the human beings who rely on the rhythms of nature to make their living. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of all peoples and nations, you plant us as your oaks of righteousness and ask us to care for one another. Be present with the leaders of every nation as they govern. Give them a righteous spirit that your goodness and mercy is received and revealed through their actions. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of exiles and wanderers, you repair what was once destroyed. We pray for people who have been displaced from their homes by fire, flood, earthquake, or storm. Support the work of Lutheran World Relief, Lutheran Disaster Response, and all disaster relief organizations and their recovery efforts. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of the powerful and the helpless, you clothe us with strength when our spirits are weak and weary. Bestow your spirit upon this congregation and empower us to, com to comfort the people who turn to us in times of need. Make your church a place of refuge and healing. Today we lift to you all those on our prayer list for the members of the military and their, their families, especially Zach, Sam, Colin, and Gabrielle. We pray for Joyce, Lorraine, Ben, Sandra, and Tim, for Mitch, Mark, Kay. We pray for Paula, Bonnie, Elvin, for Lily, Steve, Doris, Amy, for Mike and Gail, and for all those who we name out loud or in our hearts before you. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of sinners and saints, you offer joy even in the midst of grief. We are grateful for the beloved, imperfect people whose lives testify to your radiant love. Anoint all who mourn with the oil of gladness. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Now draw near to us, O God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And now may the blessing of Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Amen. Dwell in peace. Christ is with you. Thanks be to God.